I am feeling anxious, but I think it should be all right because I have to save. And I return home from my business trip. However, I am devastated the moment I arrive home. Unbelievably, the safe has been opened, and everything inside has disappeared. I know who did this. I call my husband immediately. You, you opened the safe, didn't you? George doesn't even seem to be sorry, and he responds. Why do you have a safe? Don't treat us like we're the thieves. As punishment, we're taking your expensive bag and all the other things too. You've got to be kidding me! What you're doing is stealing, you know. I figure we can't get this sorted out on the phone, so I head to his parents' house. My name is Karen. And I am a 32-year-old office worker. I married my husband George three years ago, and we rent an apartment and live there, just the two of us. We don't have any children yet, which is why we are enjoying our time as husband and wife. But there are several people that always give me a headache. George's family. His parents' house is only a 10-minute ride away from our home. So they often come to our house without any notification. To his credit, I want to say that George's father was very kind and had common sense, and who would never come to our house without letting us know. The one who comes suddenly is his mother, Sandra. George's dad would always tell her off for this, but he sadly passed away a year ago due to a disease. Since then, it seems Sandra has been released of all bondages, and she comes to our house far too often. Karen, make me some tea, please. She's there on our sofa, ordering me around as if it's her right to be there. I am tired from work every day. Why do I have to take care of my mother-in-law in addition to this? And recently. George's older sister Alice, who just got a divorce, also comes by. I want some latte. Sandra and Alice selfishly make the requests. The biggest problem, though, is that George accepts their selfishness and does nothing to help me. George is 29 years old and is three years younger than me. His sister Alice is 35, so they are six years apart. That is why both Sandra and Alice both adore and have been spoiling my husband. As his mother and his sisters were so loving and kind to him, he also took good care of them. This sounds wonderful on its own, but as both Sandra and Alice are monsters, having them as a priority is a big problem for me. George believes that. If his mother and sister are happy, that's all that matters. That is why I am always put in tight corners. I'm sorry, Alice. We don't have any latte at the moment. What? Why not? You should keep some in stock all the time. I think it's rare for a household to always have latte in stock. What's wrong, sis? George, you won't believe it. Karen says she doesn't have any latte. If you don't have any, you know what you should be doing, right? With these words from his mother, George widens his eyes and glares at me. Oi, Karen, you go and buy some right now. What? I'm in the middle of cooking dinner. Alice is saying she wants latte. Make that a priority. Karen, what about my tea? Karen, are you making mom wait? You really can't do anything, can you? As George is always on his mother and sister's side, it is always three on one, and I never have anyone to butt me up. I always have to stick up their selfish requests. 
The biggest problem I have with Sandra and Alice is that they try to take my things home with them. When Sandra comes over, she would always try to take something home. At first, it was just things like sweets I had received at work or slightly expensive tea that my mom had sent me. Most things were consumable, so even if I did think it was a bit of nuisance, I said to myself, "No problem," as it just felt like I was sharing these things with them. And if I had said no to them, I knew that George would complain. However, their request got worse, and they would ask for clothes that I wasn't wearing or a bicycle that I hadn't been using for a year. Slowly change into things that they could use, rather than just long soon. If I say, "Well, I can still sell this even I can't use it," and try to refuse, they will say, "It won't amount to much even you sell it. Wouldn't it be better for you to give it away to someone who wants to use it?" They would forcefully try to take my things. If Sandra says this, of course George will back them up and said, "Mom is saying she wants it, so give it to her." Ordering me around. Thanks to this, our house has become like a minimalist home without my meaning to. Just a few days ago, Sandra said, "This house always looks so bare and sad," which really got on my nerves. Whose fault do you think that is? When I would sometimes go to their house, I would see stuff from my house everywhere, giving me the strange impression that I'd had somehow returned home. And then something unbelievable happened. I am home from work, and I see a woman's coat in the entrance. Is George cheating on me? And at this time, so boldly. You've got to be kidding me! I crash into the living room angrily, and I see Sandra there. Sandra, what are you doing here? She's sneakily opening the cupboard. Oh, um, the dishes were about to fall. Did you touch my cupboard and open it? I asked her, and she is panicking, saying. What are you talking about? Raising her voice, there was an earthquake and the dishes were about to fall. She's definitely lying. This cupboard is strong and stable, so a small earthquake won't affect it. If the earthquake was so big as to make the cupboard shake, I would have received an alert on the app that I have. I think I'll leave now. As Sandra tries to get up, I tell her, "No, since you are here, why don't you have some tea?" And get her to sit down again. She looks nervous while drinking her tea. It's so clear that she has stolen something. Sandra has her back on her knees and is cradling it, as though protecting it from something. I look up whether an earthquake had occurred. Just in case, but as expected, nothing comes up. Sandra, what were you really doing? Excuse me. You were opening the cupboard when no one was at home. As I said, the earthquake. I just looked it up, and there was no earthquake. Huh? She looks distressed. That can't be true. It was shaking. If there's an earthquake, it will come up in the internet, you know. At that time, you said you were holding the dishes to stop them from falling. Nothing came up. You didn't take any of the dishes, did you? With this, she looks even more distressed. What are you saying? Are you accusing me? You want to say that I am a thief? We'll see whether I'm wrongly accusing you, or whether you really are a thief. Once we check your belongings, K 
Can you please show me the insides of your bag that you're holding ever so tightly? Sandra looks around nervously, as though she doesn't know what to do. Why? Why do I have to do something like that? There shouldn't be any problem if you didn't take anything. Yes. Well. And at this timing, my husband comes home. I'm home. Hearing his voice, Sandra looks relieved. Oh, George, you're back. Mom, you're here. George, I want to ask you a favor. Could you lend me this plate? Unbelievably, she picks up a plate from the inside of her bag. The plate is clearly mine, and it is an expensive one that I received as a present from my aunt. You did put a plate in your bag. For a moment, Sandra jumps at my words, but she says, "What are you talking about? I told you that I want to lend it to me." Clearly, she is lying. I know that she never said this to me, but as George is always on her side, he believes her rather than me. Karen, why are you lying? Mom says she just wants to borrow it, but you saying she took it? Don't treat her as if she's a thief. And if she's asking me if she can borrow it, does that mean you refuse to lend it to her? Seeing that George is on her side, Sandra starts gaining back her strength. That's right. I knew it was Karen's, so I asked her, but she wouldn't allow it. Karen, I didn't think you were the type of person that didn't honor my family. Anyway, we're lending this play to Mom, okay? Wait a second. You know that this is my favorite play. Even so. Mom wants to use it. Even if we say we're gonna land it, it's going to end up belonging to her. I could not stand back. I don't care what you say. I'm not lending your mother this plate. Stop fooling around. Do as I say. Can you please stop giving everything to Sandra and Alice? Shut up. What's wrong with caring about my family? This isn't caring. You're just giving my stuff away to them. With this, George doesn't seem to know how to respond. Anyway, I'm taking this plate back, and I take the plate from Sandra's hands. No, wait. And Sandra, why do you have the keys to this apartment? I don't remember giving them to you. I did. He says this matter-of-factly. Mom is family, so she should be allowed to go in and out of this room, right? No way! This apartment is our home as husband and wife. Thanks to you giving the keys to her, she tries to steal my stuff. Like I said, Mom didn't steal anything. If you are going to treat her this poorly, I have my own thoughts as to what I should do. You know, your own thoughts. With this, George starts to pack his belongings. What are you doing? I'm packing my stuff. I'm going to stay at Mom's for a while. You stay here on your own and cool down. I don't know what to say. Does he think I'm going to be shocked at this behavior? If George is going back to his parents' house, that means Sandra and Alice will not come here. I tried hard not to show that I am happy, and says, "Okay." In a small voice, George and Sandra look triumphant as they leave the house. Yes, I can't believe I'm so lucky. I'm thrilled to be on my own. After that, I am able to let my hair down. Just the thought that neither Sandra nor Alice will come here makes me feel so much better. And George, who always takes their side, is not here either. I realize that I have come to dislike my husband more than I had realized. I didn't know I would feel so much better just by being away from him. This is when I think. 
it may be better to leave him. About two days after George left for his parents' house, I received a bonus from my company, as no one is around to bother me anymore. I feel like I want to buy myself a present. I go to a store of a luxury brand and buy myself a bag that I had wanted for a while. I am so happy. I feel like I can fly. I'm going to take this bag with me when I see my friends soon. I am excited to use it. However, when I reach the apartment, I see Sandra there. Sandra, what are you doing? Karen, I thought you would be at work. I have a day off today. Wait, did you think that I was at work because it's a weekday and think you could steal something again? Oh, of course not. I just came to make sure you're not up to something. What? What do you mean? To make sure you're not bringing any man to the house while George is away. What are you talking about? Besides, you said you thought I was at work, and you were surprised to see me, weren't you? Well, what I mean is,、uh, anyway, don't do anything stupid. With this, Sandra rushes away. I get nervous and check inside the room. It doesn't seem she has taken anything, but it is a shame that I wasn't able to take the keys that she has. George always gets in the way, so that I have been unable to take them back. I am also worried that Sandra may have seen the shopping bag that I was holding, with the brand logo on it. What should I do? I can't stand if she steals it too. Even if I wanted to keep it at my parents' house, they are so far away that I would need to take a plane. As for rental storage. I feel like it might get all dirty, so I don't want to do that. So I decide to buy myself a safe. I buy one and have it set in my house straight away. I put a bag inside the safe and keep it in the depth of the closet. This should work. There is a reason why I have to get this done so quickly. The day after tomorrow, I am leaving for a business trip for two nights. If Sandra comes to this house while I'm away, she may steal it again. I decide to keep all my precious items in the safe and head off for the business trip. I am feeling anxious, but I think it should be all right because I have the safe. And I return home from my business trip. However, I am devastated the moment I arrived home. Unbelievably. The safe has been opened, and everything inside has disappeared. I collapse onto the floor. How was it opened? There's no trace of a burglar coming in, which means they went straight for the safe. After recovering from the initial shock, I'm filled with anger. I know who did this. I call my husband immediately. You. You opened the safe, didn't you? George doesn't even seem to be sorry, and he responds, "Why do you have a safe? Don't treat us like we're thieves. As punishment, we're taking your expensive bag and all the other things too. You've got to be kidding me! What you're doing is stealing, you know. I figure we can't get this sorted out on the phone." So I head to his parents' house. The drive there is very quick. Give me back my bag and everything else that you took. I stomp into the living room, and Sandra, George, and Alice stare at me in shock. What? What are you doing here? You can't just burst into our house. You really have no common sense, do you? I'm so ashamed that someone like you is my sister-in-law. I'm so ashamed too that I ever had to consider myself family to people like you. With this, Alice glares at me. Give me back my bag. How much do you think it cost me? 
even thought I am in a rage, neither George nor Sandra seem stirred. Like I told you, you did something that betrayed our trust. This is your punishment. And Mom wanted that bag to begin with, so I brought it here and gave it to her. George is very calm as he says this. Don't you feel at all sorry for giving away my belongings to your mother? Of course not. It's over, Mom. I'm so happy that everything is going as planned. That I start to laugh. What? What are you? Why are you laughing? Did you hear that? He confessed he stole from me, including the bag. George, Sandra, and Alice. Don't seem to understand what is happening. Who are you talking to? He looks behind me. There, he sees a line of people entering the living room from the entrance. Seeing them, Sandra is turning a pale shade of blue. You were lying. I thought something seemed fishy. You were suddenly boasting about all these expensive things. I can't believe you forced your son to take his wife's things and made them your own, though. No, that's not what happened. Sandra is trying to come up with an excuse, but it's too late. George already confessed everything. Oi, Karen, you've got to be kidding me! You really think you'll get away with this? How terrible! Just because you're put in a tight spot, you're threatening your wife. The people I bought here are the neighbors. Sandra has been friends with the neighbors for quite some time, and I knew that she was boosting a lot to them. That is why I thought I would tell them the truth and ask them to help punish my mother-in-law. After being told off by a neighbor, George has become quiet. How do you think it's fair that you called over so many people to blame us? Alice stands up. However, she's no match for the neighbors. What about you? The three of you got together and attacked Karen, didn't you? And I hear you got a divorce and returned to your parents' house, but that you're not even working, right? At the age, really? Maybe your husband left you because you have such a rotten lifestyle and personality. It seems Alice was not expecting this sort of response. She turns red and rushes up to the stairs. Now, please, can you return me my stuff? I stand in front of George and request that he give me back the things from my safe. It seems he has given up. And he returns my bag and all my other precious items. Thank you. Okay, then, now I'm going to return our apartment to you. Huh? I want a divorce. And I hand him the divorce papers. What? No, not the divorce. You really think that I wouldn't divorce you after everything that you did? You're so optimistic, aren't you? You care too much about your mom and sister that you put their needs before your wife's, and even when they go too far, you don't stop them. You help them. I don't want to be with someone like that any longer. I'm prepared to fight you at court. If that happens, what your mother did could be considered a crime, you know. I'm not actually willing to take things so far, but I say this anyway. It seems to have worked, and Sandra says, "I don't want to be caught. Please don't take it to court." And she urges George to agree to divorce. The neighbors see Sandra like this, and they say, "Well, you've already committed a crime. You're a fraud," and they make fun of her. George can do nothing but listen to his mother, and he signs the divorce papers, and he agrees to having no division of property, which means all my savings belong to me. 
It seems George had been spending so much for his mother and sister that he realized that there is no money left in his account. I hear that he is devastated. As for Sandra and Alice, they're scared at what the neighbors will say, that they can't walk the streets anymore out of embarrassment. It looks like they are always staying in the house now. Serves them right. They got what they deserve. I have rented a room for myself, and am enjoying my single life. I use the bag I bought on various occasions, and it makes me feel so good every time I use it. I hope to spend a happy life surrounded by the things that I truly like. It's unbelievable that George took all his wife's stuff and gave them to his mother and sister. Thinking that that sort of behavior is completely normal, and even going into the room to steal while Karen's away, that's completely the act of a thief. He should be grateful that she didn't call the police. I hope Karen takes good care of her bag and enjoys her single life. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying this video, and see you in the next one.